Hello everyone, so welcome to this video, and in this video, we prove that the probability of the empty set is zero. Now, we are going to prove this using the three axioms of probability. Now, if you have never encountered this before, then my previous video goes through what this is exactly. I will link that video in the description, and you can have a look at that. It's a relatively short video, so you can look at that and then come back here. But if you have looked at that and you know what the axioms are, then we are going to use them to prove this very intuitive result. Yeah, let's dive in then. So I'm going to let A1 be the whole sample space. And then I'm going to let A2, so on, so forth, AN, so on, so forth, be the empty set. OK, so what I have here is I have a collection of infinite events where each event is just the empty set. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to apply axiom number three and axiom number three says that if you have a collection of infinite disjoint events, the probability of their unions is the probability of their individual sums. Now, we have a collection of infinite events, certainly, because we've got A1 followed by infinite events, which are just the empty set. But are these events disjoint? Well, yes, because the sample space intersect the empty set is the empty set, and the empty set intersect the empty set is the empty set, just by the definition of what intersection is. So we're going to apply axiom three. And I'm just writing it down here. There we go. So the probability of the unions is just a one union a two dot 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 union dot 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 union a n and so on equals the probability. Now a one is the whole sample space add a bunch of empty sets. Yeah. Now, the left hand side is the probability of the sample space union a bunch of empty sets. And the right hand side we're not meddling with right now. Now the left hand side, well, the sample space union an empty set is just the sample space. And as uh, so these empty sets unioned with each other will just give you the empty set by the definition of what the union is. Sorry. Uh, hopefully my battery doesn't die down on me because my charger is not close. And again, I'm not touching the right hand side. Now, the sample space union, the empty set is just the sample space, again, by the definition of what a union is. So just to reiterate, because I feel like my battery notification put me off. Um, the samples, so an empty set union, empty set union, empty set, so on and so forth, is just the empty set. And the sample space union, the empty set is the sample space. Okay. And so on and so forth. Um, now, this should, we can cancel out the, uh, these two probabilities, given us this result here equals zero. Now we're going to apply axiom one and axiom number one told you that the probability of an event is always greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. What this means for us is think about it. You're adding an infinite collection of numbers and the result is zero but each number itself is greater than or equal to zero which means that each number itself must be zero i hope that made sense it's very intuitive if you think about it but this gives us what we would like to prove so this is it for this video thank you for watching if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you find my videos helpful i have a whole probability crush course playlist um which is aimed for first year university students but if you want to get 
but it's also you know good for anyone who wants to learn probability so have a look at that and with that we conclude the video i hope you have an amazing day and in our next video we will prove another result from these axioms and what we'll prove in the next video is that the probability of the unions of uh let, let me just write it down so we'll prove in the next video that if we have a1 to a n which are disjoint events then axiom three still holds for them yeah so we're looking at a finite collection this time rather than an infinite disjoint collection so maybe try proving it yourself before you watch that video and look at the video to see how i proved it and how you proved it so thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video bye bye